What's up everybody, I'm Adam, you're watching Model Aviator. Banana Hobby contacted us and asked if we'd like to review a couple planes for them, so they sent us a couple from XFly, the 64mm T7A Red Hawk and the twin 50mm A10 Thunderbolt 2. We'll be getting to the Thunderbolt at some point, but today we're going to review the T7A. So we went to Banana's website and read the description of the T7A. They promise a versatile EDF experience that can be handled by anybody from a low-time EDF pilot to an experienced pilot. They don't, however, mention whether or not this would be a good first EDF. We'll have to see. Next thing they talk about is the power system and how it provides an abundance of speed, thrust, and turbine-like sound. Then they move on to the removable fixed landing gear complete with a steerable nose wheel and how that can operate from smooth as well as grass surfaces. Then of course they mention that you can take the gear off and that this airplane is easy to hand launch and when you take the gear off you're going to pick up a lot of speed and vertical of course. They claim that it is a scale looking jet that flies like a sport jet. Now it is a four channel airplane. You have ailerons, elevator, throttle and a steerable nose wheel. There is a servo that actuates the nose wheel when it's on but you do not have working rudders. They recommend a 2600 four cell pack. We're going to be flying ours on anything from a 22 to a 3200 four cell and we'll see what happens. They claim a build time of 20 minutes so let's get into this thing and see if it lives up to what they promise. So first things first our T7A arrived in very good condition. All the parts were packed well and came in unscathed. And as you can see here, it's a very low part count. They promise a 20 minute build. It's a little bit more entailed than some airplanes out there because you have to glue a couple parts together. So this one's not one where you just have a few screws and the airplanes together. However, 20 minutes is not that long. It is a pretty easy build. And as they promised, it does deliver. It took me about 18 minutes to get this airplane together and get my receiver installed. They'll start you with the main wing panels. There's a single carbon spar. You're going to slide your wing panels onto that carbon spar. There's one electronic connection on either side for the ailerons. You'll make that connection, stow the wires away in the fuselage, butt the wing up against the fuselage, and then while holding it firmly, you'll screw in two screws from underneath to lock down each wing panel. Then they're going to move to the horizontals and the verticals, both of which have to be glued on. Now, quick tip for you. When they get ready to mold all these parts, they spray the mold with a greasy compound. That makes pulling the foam away from the mold without breaking the foam possible. Quite often, the factory only goes to the trouble to clean the parts of the foam that are going to be painted. And so the bare foam parts that you have to glue still have that greasy compound or at least remnants of it there. So you want to make sure that you wipe the plain foam parts that you're going to be gluing foam to foam with alcohol and then you want to score them with your hobby knife. That's going to help you get a good glue joint no matter what glue you use. We used medium CA because we were in a hurry. The one thing you want to make sure of when you're using medium CA is be mindful not to put too much around the edges because when you make that tight fit it will seep out and look unsightly so just be careful of that. If you do the glue joint right, regardless of what you use, even medium CA, even if you're in a hurry, that will hold tight enough that the foam will literally break before that glue joint comes apart. Next, you tackle the landing gear. The main gear is a pretty simple affair. You remove the two plastic straps, two screws per strap, put the landing gear in place, screw the straps back in place, and you're good to go. Then you move to the nose wheel. You'll have a spacer that you're going to slide down on the nose wheel gear leg. That's going to separate the suspension spring from the bottom of the fuselage. You put your nose gear leg into place. You'll bring a tiller arm over the top of it and you'll tighten that down onto the landing gear leg via a grub screw, but the grub screw is on the back side. So this probably could have been engineered a little better. It's fiddly getting the Allen wrench into the grub screw from the back. It's just kind of hard to get to. And the other thing is there's a flat spot on the front side of that gear but not on the back side where you're actually screwing the grub screw in. So if you don't want that grub screw in the gear to slip and change positions on you, you're going to have to take a file or a Dremel and make a flat spot on the correct side of that gear. 
The way you know you're putting the gear leg in correctly is you want your suspension spring facing the rear of the airplane. Next, you'll install your receiver of choice and bind it to your transmitter. That way you can power the airplane up and center the servos. That makes getting your push rods on and making sure everything is mechanically adjusted to center much easier. Now, one thing you need to be mindful of, you have dual elevator servos, which means you have opposing servo arms for each elevator. When we got ours, one of the servo arms was one tooth off. If you see that, you need to make sure that you take the servo arm off and move it a tooth so that those servo arms are parallel like you see here. That way, your push rods for your elevators are going to be the same size, the same length, essentially, on both sides, and you won't have one elevator going up and down more or less than the other, which will cause a turn when you're pulling and pushing on the elevator, and you don't want that. So that'll wrap up the assembly. Now we'll talk about the setup and then we'll get to the fly. So being a plug and play, at times, the specific receiver that you choose to put in this plane is gonna have a lot to do with how your setup is gonna go and it's no different for us. We fly Spectrum, so we're gonna be using our Spectrum NX-8 transmitter and we chose an AR630 receiver. That's an AS3X safe capable receiver. We're not gonna be using safe. We are, however, gonna be using AS3X, but we put it on a switch. What we wanted to do was be able to tell you how this airplane flies both with and without stabilization and to give it the best chance to put its best foot forward in both configurations before we ever went into forward programming and activated that receiver. We got the airframe set up first. We made sure that our balance, our expo, our throws were right where we wanted them and we had the airplane flying exactly the way we wanted it to fly. So just as a pure airframe, it was set up very, very well. Then we programmed the AS3X, then tuned it for this airplane, and then put it on a switch so in one flight we can flip it on and off and see what difference there is and report it to you. So we did that. The manual is very good. When it comes to setup, they give you a balance starting point. We're a little bit off that. That's okay. If you start where they say, that's not going to hurt you. It's a good place to start. You'll have to move it around to suit you depending on how you want to fly it. They tell you when installing the push rods, the specific hole in the servo arm, they want you to put the Z-bend of the push rod in and the specific hole in the control horn that the ball link should be in. We follow the instructions as far as the elevators are concerned because you install those push rods yourself. However, the aileron push rods were already installed and interestingly enough, while the ball link is on the control horn specified in the manual, they didn't have the Z-bend of the push rod in the same hole of the servo arm specified. So we left it alone. It has plenty of roll rate that way. We didn't change it, but I just thought it was interesting that the manual suggests one thing and from the factory it came a different way. Anyway, just thought I'd point that out. So you are going to see the flying now. You'll see our setup page before this. We'll have all the usual stuff we have on the setup page, all the info you could ever want on this plane as far as our setup is concerned, including our AS3X settings in case you are a Spectrum person and you want to use AS3X with this plane as well. So check out this flying footage. We cover pretty much everything that they promised, tested it all. We'll see you back here after that and we'll give you our final thoughts.
this airplane with the receiver that we're using, the AR630 Spectrum receiver, is you have a G meter and it's fun to play with. We pulled positive 4.12, negative 3.05. Can you see that? And there you go. So, to wrap this up, the only negatives that I can think of are the nose wheel. That's just a little bit fiddly. It takes a little bit of modeling to make that right. But when I say a little bit of modeling, if you've got a Dremel or a hand file, it's going to take you anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute and a half. And you've solved that problem. So it's not that big of a deal. When it comes to changing the gear out, it's still, even though it's fiddly, it's only going to take you a minute to a minute and a half to make the change from gear to no gear and back. So not really a big deal. The other thing is that there are no skid plates, no plastic skid plates underneath. So if you have really nice grass to belly land this thing in, that's not going to be a big deal. If you're belly landing it on rough ground or if you're like me and you like to do touch and goes off the geotextile with no gear, you're going to need to put some tape or something and kind of make your own skid plate on the bottom for repetition of stuff like that. It's fast. It sounds good. It's got a lot of climb rate. It's good with and without the gear. We used a variety of batteries. Our balance point ended up being a lot farther back than the manual called for. I think the manual calls for 51. We're at between 58 and 60, depending on the battery. It's a better jet there, in our opinion. When it comes to our receiver of choice, the AS3X absolutely makes a difference. Do you have to have it if you take the time to set this airframe up well? No. It's a pretty simple airframe, pretty easy to set up, pretty easy to do some testing and get it flying well all by itself. So you don't have to have a S3X, but if you put that cherry on top of the Sunday, which is what it does when you dial it specifically to the airplane, it is going to be a more locked in and a more pleasurable experience, particularly in the wind, because it definitely makes a difference there and makes the airplane more stable and just feel bigger. It's a simple jet. It's easy to fly. Would it make a good first EDF? Absolutely. If you can fly a sport plane, you can fly this jet. Is it going to prepare you for bigger, heavier, nicer scale jets? Probably not. You need something that has a rudder for that, but bear in mind, XFly doesn't make any claim that this is a good first EDF to prepare you for stuff like that. Just that this is a really fun jet, and that it absolutely is. I think for $199 and some change for the plug and play, given the features that it has, and you can take it off and land it, with the gear on, you can get a little more speed and you can hand launch it. It is easy to hand launch if you do it conventionally and you don't do the discus throw that you saw us do in the flight that we showed you. It's pretty simple. I think XFly hit the nail on the head. This airplane's worth what they're asking and it delivers what they promise. So there's not much more I can say about it than that other than the fact that if you would like to add one of these to your hangar. You can go through a link we're going to put in the description and take you to Banana Hobby where you can buy the Red Hawk. We'll also leave our affiliate link to Horizon Hobby. So if you're a Spectrum person and you want to get yourself an AR630 and maybe use our settings for your Red Hawk for the AS3X, you can do that. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Happy flying. We'll see you next week with something else cool with wings.